companies have paid their dues time after time they've done their analysis and committed no crime and bad mistakes they've made a few they've had their share of competitors in their face but they've come through companies are the champions of the market well some are and they'll keep on fighting till the end well some will cuz some companies are the champions some companies are the champions however some are not the champions but some are the champions of the market all right ladies and gentlemen today we're going to take a look at market share so this is going to wrap up everything we've talked about regarding competition make sure you are following your storm philosophy for note taking get out your notes follow along sit back and enjoy okay so what are we going to look at today well first off if we're going to talk about market share we need to make sure we understand what exactly a market is from that we will evolve into what is market share then we will take a look at two important ways companies can address their market share one is to increase market share and the second is to improve their market share slice of the pie we'll call it and lastly we will wrap up competition altogether and try and tie everything together okay so what is a market well markets have evolved historically markets have been those places where buyers and sellers congregate buyers will purchase goods and sellers will sell their wares however markets have evolved quite a bit and we see places like square one this is a shopping mall it is a market we see places like no frills or single retail store locations that will sell a variety of goods and therefore a variety of companies goods and again this is also a market however markets don't have to be those physical locations markets can exist because a collection of sellers are all selling their the same good for example smartphone operating systems apple android blackberry windows mobile linux and symbian these are all competitors they are all sellers of smartphone operating systems they don't all locate together in one single location like the farmers market or square one or no frills but they all still sell the same good and therefore this is also considered a market and when we talk about market share this is important to note because when we talk about markets we are often talking about these collection of sellers of the same good not single locations where sellers congregate and when we say a market we can express it in terms of very broad categories or very narrow segments so broad categories are when we refer to entire industries such as the beverage industry the pie graph before you illustrates the market share of each type of beverage each slice of that pie graph represents how much money that type of product earns in that industry Pie graphs are excellent visual representations of market shares and therefore markets. We also can identify markets in terms of narrow segments. So when we looked at the broad industry, we looked at all beverages or types of beverages. When we look at narrow segments, we look at a specific type of beverage, such as carbonated soft drinks. And when you look at carbonated soft drinks, the market share breaks down into the following pie graph illustrating all the major carbonated soft drinks from coke to diet coke to pepsi to mountain dew dr pepper diet pepsi diet mountain dew diet dr pepper and fanta and each percentage is how much that product earns in that market and these percentages work out to millions or billions of dollars so when we see even a single percentage difference this can mean millions or even billions of dollars okay so market share now that we've identified what a market is we now can look at the market share so those pie graphs that we saw a market share is the percentage that one company's products takes of the total dollars spent by consumers 
on products within a specific market category. So the percentage is that individual pie slice. The total dollars are is that entire pie. Right? Consumers contribute a, a incredible amount of money to various different markets and each company or each product takes a certain percentage of that. So a market share works out to the firm's sales divided by the total market sales and this works out into a percentage. It can be reflected as well in terms of percentage of units sold or percentage of the customers who shop in that industry or that category, that segment. However, we typically will refer to market share in terms of percentages. It's easier to compare. It's a, it gives us a, a standard base value in which to compare one product to another. So market shares allow us to compare competition. Remember, there's a limited number of consumers who, who shop in a, a specific product category, such as smartphones, and there's a limited number of consumers who will use a specific brand. Therefore, there's a limit to the pie. And because of that limit, we can break down each individual smartphone or product and compare the competition. When a new product comes into the market, it therefore has the potential to to dislodge at least one existing product. If there's limited numbers, someone who comes into that market is going to displace or dislodge someone else. And we need to look at similar products in a category when we introduce new products because we need to compare our product and our company to that of the competition and how much market share is available for us. If the market is, is too saturated, there might not be enough slices of pie, let's say, to grab and therefore dollars to earn. So now that we've established what a market share is and the idea that a market consists of a whole pie and each individual product or company has a certain slice of the pie, now we have to identify how do companies increase the slice of the pie, increase their market share. If you think back to the carbonated soft drinks market, you would have noticed that Pepsi had a 15% share of the market. Again, that works out to millions, if not billions of dollars, but that may not be enough for them. Maybe they want to earn more money, so they have to do one of two things. The first is to increase the size of the overall market. Now, this is very difficult to do. Basically, what you're saying here is you need to increase the whole size of the pie. It's difficult because you have to get consumers to consume more of the total product, but consumers may not use the product no matter what. Again, think of a 90-year-old lady or male and try and convince them to use a smartphone. The chances of them using the smartphone is pretty slim but that's the difficulty in trying to get new consumers into the market or increasing this, the whole pie. However medical discoveries often can lead to this increase in the size of the pie because medical discoveries if they are positive towards a certain product means that people who would no, never consume that product may start consuming it. For example, red wine. Years ago, doctors came out and said that if you drank a glass of red wine every single day, it was good for your heart. So what did we see? The whole size of the red wine market increased considerably because people who would never consume wine began consuming wine. So one way again is to increase the size of the overall market or the size of the overall pie. The other way is to take shares away from the competition. So increasing your slice of the pie means taking away some of someone else's slice. The difficulty with this is competitors are also trying to steal shares away from you or trying to steal part of your slice of pie away from you. And what we often see is that companies or products will try and do this by expanding their locations, putting their products in various different places. The problem with this again is that it may lead to increased competition. Entering a part of the market that you never competed for before means that there might already be existing competitors who have established themselves and will try and take away now some of your pie. So how do you improve your market share? Well, you have to approach each type of business or brand differently. For Coca-Cola, they have many different brands, right? From Sprite to Diet Coke to Coca-Cola. All these are different brands, and therefore they have to approach each slightly different. They have to recognize that each of those brands has a slice of the pie, and they may need to do some things slightly different.
Few companies will experience a 1% to 2% increase or decrease in a year. It's very, very difficult, again, to take away slices of pie from other people, from other companies. And so it's rare to see that. However, to do this, again, to take away slices of, of other people's pie, you really have to look at your P's and your C's, your marketing mix. You need to assess your P's for strengths and weaknesses. This Again, P's are the internal factors that you can control. So what's your publicity like? What's your promotion, your product differentiation, your pricing strategies? What are all of these like? What are the strengths of each? What are the weaknesses of each? Improve upon the strengths. Try and reduce the weaknesses. You also need to be aware of your C's, your consumers, and your competitions. What opportunities exist out there? What threats are out there? Consumers' tastes change, so you need to be aware of this. Competitors' ad campaigns or advertising campaigns may attack your own products. You need to be aware of this. Distribution deals struck by competitors also can take away slices of your pie. So you need to be aware of your C's in the external environment. And you do. Act on those opportunities and try and avoid those threats. By improving upon your market share, you may become, all of a sudden, a market leader. A market leader is the firm with the largest market share. The market leader typically has the highest marketing expenditures, so they will market their products extensively. They will distribute extensively. They will react to price changes frequently. And they will always be coming up with new product innovations. This is what keeps them ahead of the challengers. Right. Market challengers are those firms working to improve or increase their market share. These are firms in an industry that are content with their share of the market or doing little to increase their sales. They will try and challenge at times, but they recognize that they may not have the budget to do so. And so what we see are the following industries in terms of leaders and challengers. In soft drink beverages, we see Coca-Cola as the leader and the challenger is Pepsi. We see General Mills and Kellogg's, Folgers versus Maxwell House, General Motors versus Ford Motor Company, McDonald's versus Burger King. And it's not to say that each of these challengers don't do any kind of marketing. They probably try and do a lot. However, they recognize their place in the market and they may be content with just staying there. Leaders will have to do the most work to stay ahead. If they don't, they will then fall to becoming the challenger, and the challenger will automatically step up into becoming the leader. So looking at this all together, we identified different competitive market structures, different competitive advantages for both products and services, and lastly, we've looked at now the market share. By identifying the market structure, you are better aware of how companies are going to compete in the market. By looking at competitive advantages, you are able to differentiate your product or service from your competitors. And by doing so, you will then improve your market share. Market share is the, the measurement to which we measure our competitive success, how we are able to stay ahead of our competition. But you will recognize that you have to change your marketing activities based on your place in the market. Right? If you are a challenger or a leader, your marketing activities will be different. How exactly they will be different depends on the product and the market itself. But competition will drive you to innovate, will drive you to enhance your competitive advantages. And by doing so, you will stay ahead of your competition. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's all. That's everything. Uh, make sure you have your notes in order, and we'll see you tomorrow.